Perup, are you getting tired of being capped on your internet? Well, not anymore. WaveDirect has no data caps, and with great local customer service, why go anywhere else? 30-day trials are available. Call 775-253-3887. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. News is also brought to you by Half Price Lawyers, the only law firm in Pahrump with a low price guarantee. Located at 41 North Highway 160, Unit 11. Call 400-0000. Tonight on News 46, a medical marijuana applicant adds a stoplight to sweeten the deal. One person is transported following a three-vehicle accident. And it's time to get your tickets for the staycation. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, July 21st, 2014. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. The Board of County Commissioners ranked co-owner of Prompt Valley Disposal, John Shea, and some of his partners number one for the recommendation going to the state to receive a medical marijuana license. MM Development also included a stoplight in the deal near their location on Highway 160 and Mesquite. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Bob Grosbeck. I'm president of MM Development Company. Uh, with me is our ownership group this morning. I'll briefly um, introduce them, uh, several sitting in the audience. Um, uh, next to me is Chris Wren, he's our master grower. You'll hear from Chris uh, in a few minutes. I'll talk a little more about him before he comes up. Uh, to his immediate right is John Shea, who's a partner in the organization. And uh, in the back row there, if we can have just a raise of hand, Frank Spady, another owner. Frank is a former executive with Boeing, very successful internet uh, operator in Las Vegas. and. Uh, a very, very strong national advocate for veterans' rights. We're glad to have him on the team. Larry Scheffler, um, also an owner. Larry has been in town for many years, owned property in Nye County for about 40 years now. Um, uh, Larry owns Las Vegas Color Graphics and has been a partner of ours in a number of businesses. Uh, last but not least, I've got J.D. Ellis. J.D. Ellis is a principal in Skunk, Skunk Farm Works out of um, Oregon. And uh, time permitting, uh, if there are questions, I'll have J.D. come up. He is truly a pioneer in uh, uh, infusion technology. And uh, I should point out for the record, the patents that he has, he's put in the public domain. He's not looking to profit off of those. So a uh, pretty amazing uh, gentleman. Uh, we've got Dr. Gene Libby here. I thought I saw him floating around. He's on our advisory board. He's an orthopedic surgeon in Las Vegas. Uh, Dr. Shisson is also on our advisory board but has patients today and couldn't get out. Um, I think that covers our group here now. I want to touch briefly, I'm going to follow the matrix as loosely, uh, or as closely as I can rather, um, the financial side of this. I supplemented yesterday, we provided a pro forma in our backup material, but I, I want you to understand also, um, uh, I gave you a bank statement yesterday, it kind of, it shows a cash we have on a hand in various accounts for this project and totals a little over $3 million. I hope you have that there. I actually provided you with a bank statement. Um, we're committed to this project. Um, as evidenced by that. Um, we're longtime uh, uh, Nevada residents. As you can see from the board here, uh, you all know John Shea, of course. John's been here with Prime Valley Disposal for almost 18 years. I've had the pleasure of working John with John and with this board uh, for well over a decade myself. Um, I don't need to talk about what we do in the community, I don't think, because you see it every day. Um, we're, we're strong supporters of the community. We're community partners in every respect. That same model will be adopted at MM. That's the same platform we'll work from. 
And speaking about marijuana, voters in the first state to allow the sale of recreational marijuana say pot use should be limited to the home or member only clubs, with no lighting up in bars or public clubs, according to a new poll. The report released today also indicates that a majority of Colorado voters still support legal marijuana sales six months after the law kicked in. Two thirds also say marijuana shouldn't be legal at entertainment events where admission is charged. And just over six in 10 people say laws regularly regulating marijuana should be as strict as those regulating alcohol use. Colorado law bans smoking pot inside bars and restaurants. Some private marijuana clubs are in the process of opening, and only 16 percent of people have tried pot since it has become legal, according to the survey. Well, you still have time to get your tickets for the fundraiser for Symphony Animal Foundation's Staycation. Lorraine Russo-Harper gives us all the details. We do. We have a raffle for a staycation. It's a little uh, get away in Las Vegas at the Palazzo Hotel. You get a suite for one night. You get two tickets to uh, the show at the Palazzo. You get two tickets for lunch or dinner at one of their restaurants. Uh, it's a VIP check-in. They got a great, great pool area. So it's a nice little getaway, kind of in your own backyard. So it's a staycation. The drawing tickets are $10.00 each or three for twenty dollars it's a fifteen hundred dollar value it's a great getaway hang out by the pool chill off in this hot weather and just uh, and support a great cause because it all benefits symphony animal foundation and that's what this is for right uh, symphony animal foundation fundraiser uh the plazio uh has donated this wonderful staycation to raise funds they have they have donated it and we're actually going to do the drawing on knye radio next thursday the 24th of july uh, somewhere between 1 and 4 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So get your tickets now. They are on sale at Snippany's, and we also have them on sale at the front desk at the Best Western. Wonderful. And so uh, come on down and do that. When's the last day that you can buy tickets for this? The last day will be on Wednesday, July 23rd, because we will be doing the drawing on Thursday, July 24th. And they can, can they buy them 24-7 right here in the lobby? They can. We are open 24-7, so come on down. You can't sleep. Get up, get dressed, buy some tickets, and go home. <laughs> it's a wonderful uh, bench and a wonderful thing that Kay and I is doing. Tell me uh, how is Symphony's going? The, this is going to go for the building fund, right? It is. I'll tell you, we are so close and we have to get our parking lot paved before we can get our CFO. So we're waiting to get that done. And we're just tying up all the little loose ends here and there. Parking lot is the last big thing we're waiting for. So as soon as that's done, we're ready. And people can go on to Symphony Animal Foundation's website to donate anytime, right? They can. It's www.symphonyanimalfoundation.org. And they can always give me a call at 702-528-4997 and find me here at Best Western. And traffic was diverted around a three-vehicle accident which occurred near Irene Street late Friday afternoon. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. A three-vehicle accident occurred on Friday afternoon on Highway 160 near Irene Street. One person was transported to local hospital facilities. Another one complained of... Uh, injury to the head and declined to be transported via Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue. Nye County Sheriff's deputies blocked traffic while Nevada Highway Patrol conducted the accident investigation. All vehicles received only minor damage. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. So a good weekend all in all uh, for accidents or uh, structure fires. Nothing really occurred on Saturday and Sunday, so going out there. When we come back from this break, we'll have your Desert View Hospital health tip. This portion of the news is brought to you by Integrity Taxi. Reliable, safe, and fun. Call Integrity Taxi at 751-1111.
Welcome back to News 46. A standard bone marrow transplant is a potential treatment option for patients with severe sickle cell disease. However, that procedure has only been done in children with sickle cell. A new study examined whether a less intensive and safer type of bone marrow transplant could improve outcomes for adults with sickle cell disease. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. Imagine someone taking like a stick and just like stabbing, like, you know, like hitting you on your joints. That's how painful it is. That pain caused Juliana Ejidobe to spend a lot of time in the hospital. She was diagnosed with sickle cell at age two. It's a genetic disorder where normal donut-shaped red blood cells become sickle or banana-shaped cells. These sickle cells have a difficult time passing through the blood vessels. They can clog the joints, causing bone pain in the lungs, difficulty breathing and pneumonia, and in the brain, stroke. A bone marrow transplant is the only way to cure the disease. The standard transplant usually involves uh, full doses of chemotherapy and or radiation. Most adults with sickle cell disease have organ damage that would prevent them from being able to get a standard bone marrow transplant. Doctors John Tisdale and Matthew Shea from the National Institutes of Health and co-authors tested a regimen that didn't require destroying all of an adult patient's bone marrow. 30 patients who had a sibling with matching immune characteristics received the less intensive transplant. Therapies for uh, sickle cell disease are only very few. There's only one drug that's available uh, to treat. Uh, the remainder of the therapy includes in blood transfusions. In whom these two therapies don't work, other approaches are needed. Transplantation was successful in 26 of the 30 patients. Using this less toxic way of preparing a patient for a bone marrow transplant had success rates that are comparable to the more toxic kind of transplant that's performed in children. Juliana received bone marrow from her older sister. It changed my life. Yeah, I do get pain, but it's not compared to what I used to have before. Following her passion, Juliana is now a nurse with big plans for her future. I'm just looking forward to just living life, being normal, getting married and just having my own family. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. Thanks so much, Catherine. Researchers also report that a common transplant complication known as graft-versus-host disease did not happen in any of the study participants, and after the transplant, 15 patients stopped taking their immunosuppression medication. A student from the United States, a family on vacation, a nun, and a crew of leading AIDS researchers on the way to a world conference are just a few of the individual lives lost on Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 that was struck down on Thursday by unknown attackers in the rebel-controlled part of eastern Ukraine. Malaysia on Saturday issued its latest list of the 298 people aboard that perished. There were 193 Dutch citizens, the most of any nation, on the flight from Amsterdam to Malaysia. The other people, including children and infants, came from around the world. The Nye County Commissioners have passed a resolution endorsing the Interstate 11 project up Highway 95 from Las Vegas to Reno as part of the new highway corridor from Mexico to Canada. The resolution states that the I-11 project would connect the two major urban population centers in Nevada, tie defense facilities like Nellis Air Force Base and Fallon Naval Air Station, promote new infrastructure for warehousing and manufacturing, and also improve highway safety. Continuing with our series called Turning the Camera Around, we bring you our technical director, Patrick Dubrynin. Turning the Camera Around. Um, I'm technical director. So what does that consist of? Well, actually, there's quite a bit that I do um, here at the TV station. It's I actually wear many hats. Mm -hmm. um, it, not only do I uh, run the console for the TV shows that we produce here, but I also, you could say that I'm the lighting director, uh, camera operator, producer, uh, you know, just, just a, a number of different things that go on at the same time. And so you've been doing this for a while. You also edited uh, um, a couple movies or one 
feature film or what? Well, what actually brought me to Pahrump is um, I'm actually working on a movie right now, mm -hmm. both editing and doing the post-production sound for it. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's for a, a friend that I've known since high school. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the process of almost finishing it, and uh, we should have that finished um, by this fall. And that's going to be an interesting film, too, as well, because it's on the Amargosa Opera House, right? Yes, actually, uh, it was. It's it's a paranormal story, a mm -hmm. ghost story, mm -hmm. and it centers around the Amargosa Opera House, and it involves some characters who uh, find out that they they get more than they bargained for. <laughs> So tell me what's the things that you like most about your position here, what's the things that you like least about your position here, and what's most surprising or that you've learned? Well, as far as what, what I like about it, uh, it, it allows me to do more of what I've always wanted to do, which is actually you know, work with audio and work with video, but do it in a different way that I'd never done before. Uh, beforehand, I produced uh, videos um, on my own with uh, my own computer, and, and now uh, it's, it's a whole different way of producing it. So it's very challenging in doing it that way. Um, what I didn't expect walking into this job mm -hmm. was such a learning curve in how to do it. Um, I've had extensive audio and video experience, but when I came into this job, it took me almost a complete month to uh, get comfortable with, with how to do it. Yeah. So, and, and it's, it's still challenging. Mm -hmm. um, every day, uh, you would think that doing a newscast or a show, you would be doing the same things over and over. And f from some respects, you are doing a lot of the same things within a show, but like I said, there's always something that creeps up that you can't account for that goes wrong or there's a cable pulled or, you know, just something happens okay. and you just have to roll with it and, and do the best you can and pick up where you left off and, and fix it and move on. Such a talented person. So you guys know who I'm talking to all the time when I look over there and I talk to Patrick right behind that glass window over there. So at least we got him on camera finally. Yay! And we'll continue, of course, with that series. And if you want to see the entire uploads for those, you can go on KPBM's YouTube page. Crews continue to search today for two men who went missing Sunday after going into the waters at Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Yesterday, a visitor notified a ranger that a person was missing at Lake Mojave south of Willow Beach. Later reports indicated that the man, who was 53 years old, jumped off a boat to go swimming and was seen going underwater. Later that day, the Lake Mead Interagency Communications Center received a 911 call reporting that a 25-year-old Las Vegas man went missing while swimming near Bull Boulder Islands on Lake Mead. The park ranger said that neither man was wearing a life jacket and winds were measured at between 20 and 30 miles per hour. After this break, we'll have your news across Nevada and first business brief. Barump Early Learning Academy, our goal is to provide a complete nurturing environment for the growth and development of the whole child, socially, emotionally, physically, and intellectually. Children are natural explorers and need hands-on experiences to help stimulate their own imaginations. We strive to meet the needs of each individual child at their developmental level through planned activities, plus help each child attain a higher level of achievement. Call 751-5335 for more information. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. In June, 14,503 initial claims for unemployment insurance were filed in Nevada, down just 3% compared to June of 2013. Initial claims have fallen compared to the previous year for 19 straight months and in 52 of the past 55 months.
The facelift coming to Maryland Parkway in Las Vegas is a step closer to including significant public art components thanks to a prestigious federal grant award. The Maryland Parkway project, which stretches from McCarran International Airport, goes by UNLV and the Boulevard Mall, and extends into downtown Las Vegas, is one of 66 projects around the country receiving $5 million in grants from the National Endowment of the Arts. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service announced plans to designate approximately 5,561 acres on Mount Charleston in southern Nevada's Spring Mountains as critical habitat for the endangered Mount Charleston blue butterfly. The land comprising the proposed critical habitat is 99% federally owned and mostly within designated wilderness. The butterfly was listed as endangered in October of 2013 under the Endangered Species Act. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. This is the first business brief for Monday, July 21st. I'm Angela Miles. FedEx says a conviction could deliver a material blow to profits. Last week, the Justice Department indicted FedEx on charges the company knew for a decade it was transporting illegal drugs sold online. FedEx says it is innocent of the charges brought by the Department of Justice and will plead not guilty. American drug company Abby plans to shift its headquarters to the UK for a tax break now that it's locked on a deal with Dublin-based Shire. By 2016, Abby's tax rate will decline from 22% to 13%. Abby's top-selling drug is Humira. Abby will pay $54 billion for Shire. And three states are suing Five Hour Energy for deceptive advertising. Five Hour Energy is marketed as a unique blend of ingredients. Regulators call it a concentrated shot of caffeine. The company plans to defend itself. That's the First Business Brief. I'm Angela Miles. Thanks, Angela. When we come back from this break, we'll have your weather with Noah Began. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Monday, July 21st. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 99 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 105 degrees. Winds were coming from the south-southwest today at 8 miles per hour with gusts up to 22 miles per hour. Pretty high winds out there today. Sure hope none of you blew away. The UV index today was 11, which is extreme. Humidity was at 19 percent. Sunrise was at 543 this morning. And the record high in 1942 was 113 degrees. Tonight we'll have clear skies with a low of 74 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 82 degrees. Winds will be coming from the south-southwest at 4 miles per hour with gusts up to 9 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 23 percent. Sunset will be at 5, uh, excuse me, 7.58 p.m. And the record low in 1940 was 56 degrees. Tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 104 degrees and a low of 77 degrees. Winds will be coming from the south-southwest at 6 miles per hour with gusts up to 13 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 22 percent. Sunrise will be at 5.43 a.m. And the UV index will be 11, which is extreme. So make sure you're wearing sunscreen if you go outside. For our seven-day forecast, we'll have a mostly sunny week, though we'll probably be seeing some clouds in the sky this weekend. Your high temperatures will be ranging from 104 degrees to 109 degrees, peaking there on Friday. And your low temperatures will be ranging from 76 degrees to 81 degrees. It's going to be hot, hot, hot. You know, everybody always approaches Noah and blames him for the weather. It's so much fun. So if you see him out there, make sure to tell him about uh, that hot weather forecast coming up. I do have to tell you that behind the scenes uh, at KPVM, the turning the camera around, I'm enjoying the segment because you guys can kind of visualize and see who we're talking about when we say goodnight because some of you have noticed that I say goodnight um, from all of us up here at KPVM, but I list certain people's names. It's because those people had uh, um, extra something to do on that broadcast, so I always will uh, give a special thank you to them, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So uh, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from everyone up here on the hill, including Patrick, Darby, Tiffany, and Noah. We wish you a wonderful night. We'll see you back here.